Thomas. Jenison, good to have you. Welcome. It's working. West Bloomfield, good to have you with us. Welcome. Sorry it's raining, everyone. I know you wanted to see those colors. Uh, where else? I know Traverse City here. And, and where else? Barton Center. Barton Center. Wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. Anyone else? This week? Where from? Columbus, Ohio. You came a little ways, huh? Do you know them back there? They're from Columbus as well. No, no. Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm sorry. Where else? South Bend. Good to have you. Welcome. You got to watch the games tonight? <laughs> okay, where else? Greenville, Michigan, good to have you all with us. Welcome, welcome. Before we start Mass, where, where else? Is there someone else? Ronnie? Dallas, Texas. Well, you win the prize. You're the farthest away today. Welcome, welcome. Before we start Mass, we always go to our prayer and our hymnal here, and let's pray it together. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. My parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It'll be friendly if I am. It'll be holy if I am. Its pews be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It'll be prayerful if I pray. It'll make generous gifts to many causes if I'm a generous giver. It'll bring others into worship if I invite and bring them. It'll be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy if I who make it what it is am filled with these same things. Therefore, with the help of God, I now dedicate myself to the task of being all things I want my parish to be. Amen. Amen. We had a beautiful funeral here today for Andy Mahalik, Dr. Andy Mahalik. Andy served our world in Vietnam in the war as a doctor and all over our country as a radiologist. He even taught for many years uh, young students how to do the trade. So um, he had a beautiful celebration of his life today. And uh, he leaves behind Judy, as you all know, from this, that comes to this Mass, and seven children. And um, was there 13 great-grandchildren and seven? Yes, a big family, big family. Okay, we couldn't count all of them. Okay. Well, let's turn to each other now and welcome each other to Mass. Welcome. Welcome, Mary. Welcome, 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 welcome. Good to have you. I keep doing that. Sorry. <laughs> good to see you. How'd the funeral go? Again. Good, 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 good. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Good to see everyone. Welcome. 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 And as we gather for the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time, let us begin by singing number 663, Lord of All Hopefulness, number 663. Father, you missed it. And give us 
God, we pray. You're pleased in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Beloved in Christ, as we've come here to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, let's be mindful of how God keeps calling us into God's life. May we always be persistent in answering the call, and may we always be people that persevere in our For those times we fail, may we ask the Lord again for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, and we glorify you, we give you thanks. For your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth of good will for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father glory God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Amen. Let us 
let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, Pick out certain men, and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he left his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our, Our help, help is, is from, from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall come my help? My help shall come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our, Our help, help is from the Lord, who made, made heaven and earth. He will keep your foot from stumbling. Your guard will never slumber. No, he sleeps not nor slumbers. Israel's guard. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord your guard, the Lord your shade at your right hand. By day the sun shall not smite you, nor the moon in the night. Our, Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will guard you from evil. He will guard your soul. The Lord will guard your going and coming, both now and forever. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. 
I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to be God. To God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Word of God is living and effective, discerning reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said to them, There was a certain judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge, judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, Well, it is true I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You know, as a priest, you have many conversations with many people. And so often when I meet married couples, I'm always interested if they're married or if a widow or widower to ask them how they met as spouses. Not surprisingly, many people truly like sharing that story, that information with me, telling how their initial meeting happened. It's incredible how many different interesting stories people can give of how they've met. Although today it seems like most people that are younger meet now more online than they did in the past. Like when my parents were dating, I think they met 
in a dance hall. Probably some of you met to that way as well, because dancing was kind of popular back then, wasn't it? But today online, it seems to be that that's the dominant way young people meet. And they progress from there with their relationship. Their, co their courtship develops in some way. And there's three types of stories that often get mentioned to me, often. Some people tell me that it was love at first sight. First time they met the person they married, they knew it was the one. He or she was the one. I guess that doesn't just happen in movies, right? Others have more traditional stories. We met in high school. We went on a few dates and kept going on dates. And then one thing led to another, and before you knew it, years had gone by, and we finally seemed like marriage was the right thing to do. I guess you could say it took us a little time to fall in love with each other, but we did. And the third story I often hear is, this is kind of most of the time, is that one partner says, I wasn't that interested at first in him or her. He or she kept asking all the time and asking over a period of time, months and months to go out, and eventually he or she wore me down. And so we went out, and I guess it was finally the right thing to do. And I'm laughing because now I was so wrong. If he or she had given up on me, things wouldn't have worked out as they did so well. They're very happy today because sometimes good things really take a lot of time, don't they? Good things take a lot of time. <clears throat> At some level, we know that already as human beings. We've been through it ourselves in life. Look at us who've tried to learn an instrument, how to play an instrument. You know when you first start in those early stages how huge of a temptation it is to just give up on that instrument. It's difficult. The sound that comes out of that instrument usually is awful. And practicing dips into our free time. But if a person sticks with it, what happens? When they plug away at it, usually they become a great musician. And it leads from the negative to the positive. But it takes the drudgery that we had before and turns it into joy. Because sometimes things just take time. They take time. Maybe it's in a sport you're playing for the first time. Maybe some sort of skill that you're trying to develop. Maybe it's those first few weeks at a new job that you have. Maybe it's an exercise regime, something you never tried before. Or maybe sometimes coursework in a new area of study. There are countless examples of things that we had to start at as someone that didn't know what we were doing to master what we could. And the outcome, we, when we stayed with it, really cho showed us that perseverance matters, persistence matters. The more you continue to try and don't give up, usually you find blessings in the end. Today's readings, all three give this example, don't they? That first reading from Exodus, we see Moses assisted by Aaron and her. He's trying to help the Israelites in battle. And he knows that he's getting tired, and so he has those two men hold up his hand so he can have the benefit of God's hand helping them in that battle. He kept at it. And well, the Israelites then were victorious. Try to not attempt to figure out how that worked. That's really not the point of the story, but persistence made them win. And the second reading from Timothy, 2 Timothy, Paul tells Timothy that he needs to be encouraged in his faith. He urges him to proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, to keep being persistent. In the gospel story from Luke, we hear that parable of that woman who was so persistent. I think it would have been fun to meet her, wouldn't it have been? She truly knew what she was doing, didn't she? She convinced that unjust judge to render a decision in her favor. 
And the author of the story includes, I think, an interesting part to the story that maybe is a little puzzling, a detail that describes the judge's decisions really based on the fact that he was kind of getting scared of her because he was, she continued to bother him, and he was afraid kind of in, for his life, what she would do. You've got to hand it to her. She never gave up. She never gave up. And a good thing happened for her. Now, believing that good things take place when persistence pays off is so much easier to embrace when it comes to things that are so normal to our life, so normal to everyday life. We get the degree. We learn the instrument. We win the game. We paint the picture. We get the gal, the guy, that we dreamed of. Put another way, when it comes to certain things in life, we can see the fruits clearly of persistence, the results when we persevere. And this is encouraging us even more to always be that type of person in our life. But you know, faith isn't like that, is it? We don't always see as God sees, do we? We don't always understand as God does. We don't see the whole picture. And we don't really know exactly what caused what. Don't always understand exactly how our persistence in our spiritual life actually made a difference in our lives or even in the lives of other people. But we pray anyway. We give anyway. We trust anyway. We forgive anyway. We hope anyway, and we always, as a Christian, love anyway. With a deep sense that it's right. It's the right thing to do. We know in our consciences it's the right thing to do. The only thing we can do if we want to remain a faithful Christian connected to our Lord as his disciple. And maybe most importantly we don't give up, whether we can clearly see the fruits or not, whether we know precisely what God is up to or not up to, whether things turn out the way we want them to turn out or not. Those things ultimately aren't the most important, are they? Staying with it is. Staying on the path is. Staying in conversation with our loving God is. And when we are persistent, persevere, we know in our own life amazing things follow. There's an inner peace, a joy. There's something beautiful in our lives that we look forward to in each day because God is there. God is in our life. And good things follow. We don't walk away. We persevere persistent with God he blesses us too as that woman was so blessed today think about your life and where you are think about sometimes the rough times of life sometimes things when things never were going right wasn't your persistence your perseverance what mattered didn't it help you to get to a better day where you saw not just the cross, but you saw the resurrection. Thank you for being here today, faithful people of God. Thank you for your persistence. Thank you for persevering. Thank you for being good followers of Christ. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand and bring our prayers to God our Father? Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we now turn to you with these, our many prayers, trusting you always as you continue to never give up on us. That believers in all parts of the world may always enjoy the freedom to pray in public and to worship God according to his command, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders and candidates for public office may always acknowledge that the source of all law and authority is in God alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's people may persevere in their prayers and works to eliminate abortion, infanticide, euthanasia, and every form of injustice against human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper unity, understanding, and practical cooperation between the different Christian denominations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all in need of our prayers, especially the sick and dying, may be surrounded by God's grace and healing love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed loved ones, that the angels may receive them into paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Everett Lautner, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for any intention that you brought to this Mass, those watching on the internet right now, those are visitors and parishioners, let's now mention it to the Lord in silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Good and gracious God, thank you for the gift of each other. Thank you for our many visitors with us today and all those here that love you. Bless us as we continue to try to be a good follower of Christ, doing your work every day with joy, helping us to be your loving people, changing this world in the little ways we can, the big ways we can. Bless us as we always do what you ask and answer these prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you're now seated, we welcome the ushers to come forward. Thank you, people of God, for your generosity given today to help St. Philip Neri perish. Thank you.
and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries that we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, through whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in his paschal mystery. And so with angels and saints, we praise you as in one voice now we all acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full. Are full of your glory. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jeff, our Bishop, all the clergy and religious, and all the baptized people of God. Remember Everett Lautner, your servant, whom you have called from this world to yourself, and all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Philip Neri, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, Art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now. Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. But share a sign of peace with one another. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Peter, the body of Christ. John, the body of Christ. Henry, the body of Christ. Bill, the body of Christ. Rosemary, the body of Christ. Distribute the body of Christ. offer as a sign of our love. 
for bread that is broken we give thanks for wine that is poured we give praise for life and for knowledge of the kingdom all praise to you until the end of time life giving bread saving cup we offer Francis has asked that we pray for the suffering of the world, especially in Ukraine, and now we continue to add to those prayers those rebuilding their lives in Florida. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. At this time, as our ushers are going to take up a second collection that the bishop has asked that we take for the people uh, suffering from the effects of the hurricane in Florida. So at this time, ushers come forward for that collection. And Linda Payment's going to come up forward as well and talk to you briefly about our festival coming up as you guys are taking up the collection. Let's give Linda some strength here as she goes with courage. Okay, thank you, Linda. Good evening, everybody. I think most of you know me. Father just told you who I am. But for those of you who don't, I am Linda Payment, and I am the coordinator for the Come to Christmas Party. And if you don't know what the Come to Christmas Party is, I'm going to tell you right now. First of all, it is a big celebration that we will be having on December 4th from 5 to 7. It is a progressive dinner with hors d'oeuvres, soup, salad, a main entree, coffee, wine, desserts, raffles, uh, wreath selling, and entertainment. It's a great evening. Uh, we will have the silent, a silent auction with Ken's beautiful wreaths. We may have another uh, type of raffle. You'll learn more about that later. The event this year is $30 a person. Now, how it works, in case you don't know, uh, a host or hostess will reserve a table. They will invite enough guests to fill the table of eight. They will call Kim. As soon as you want a table, call Kim. Do not dilly-dally. And you will go on the list. Kim will get a hold of the coordinators, who are Mary Machin and uh, Kay Evans. They will contact you immediately provide you with a nice sign-up form for you to fill out and get the money back to Kim. Once you get that table reserved through Kim and through Kay and Mary, then you can take your a little time to get this all organized. But it's key to get your reservation in as soon as possible because we're going to reserve all the tables for only St. Philip Neary and St. Rita's until November 6th. After November 6th, we're going to open it up to other churches or anyone else that would like to reserve a table. So just keep that in mind that you're going to want to do it quickly. Um, there will be a sign-up form. They are not on the bulletin stands tonight, but like I say, Kay and Mary will be getting a hold of you, and you'll get this personally, either by email or mailed. Uh, probably next week we'll have them on the bulletin stands. But even if you just pick one up and fill it out, don't delay in getting your reservation in. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? As a host or hostess, you will be responsible to invite your guest at your table, and you will be responsible to set the table with your own dishes and decorate it with a, a nativity scene centerpiece. Um, and if you want to come, but you don't want to host a table, still call Kim and get on the reservation list. We'll put you on a waiting list, and you'll, you'll end up with some other people that you can make new friends with, or maybe you already know them, but we'll, we'll set you up, so don't worry about that. Um, I don't think there's anything else to tell you tonight. I just wanted to let you know that it's urgent to get your reservation in soon. I am going to have a real short meeting in the hall uh, right after Mass tonight. We still, I have all the major positions filled, but I have some lower level, not a lot of work positions that I still need some help with. One of the big things I really do need help with are servers. And servers are pretty hard to get for an event like this because almost everyone's attending the event. But if you have some nephews or nieces or cousins or neighbors or anyone that you know that might 
be able to serve, please let me know. I'd really appreciate it. And um, I hope to see you in the meeting after. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. And Linda forgot to tell you that the reason the cost had to go up $5 is that the prices of food went up a lot, as you all know, right? So that's why that happened, okay? Uh, let us pray. Grant to the Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age, and prepared for the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just a few more reminders. First off, our faith formation classes begin after Mass Sunday. Also, adults um, uh, are welcome to join the discussion group that happens also in the parish hall afterwards. We're still looking for people to pray the rosary before the Masses on Sunday and Saturday in October to sign up sheets at the bulletin stands. Um, also stop and sign the welcome cards of our new parishioners if you have a chance today. Uh, we have a very de detailed brochure produced by the Michigan Catholic Conference on Proposal 3. And the why we should vote no on this Proposal 3 is located today on the bulletin stands. Please take them with you. Uh, haven't, if you haven't downloaded the parish app yet, read the bulletin on how to download this app and you'll stay more informed than ever with St. Philip Neary Parish. Call to reserve your tables uh, this week if you can, or today as well, and All Saints Day coming up on November uh, 1st. We're going to have Mass at 9 in the morning at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, um, and then on Wednesday we'll have All Souls Day celebration at 6 p.m. At that Mass, we remember all of our beloved dead, those that we lost um, in our lives, and we ask everyone to bring candles, uh, in honor of each one person they want remembered at that Mass and those recently that passed. Uh, there will be a parish council um, meeting and, and is the finance council as well this Thursday? Is that Kim? Right, as well. It starts at 5.30 for the pastoral council, I think 4.30 for... Okay, 5.30 is when everyone's invited to the pastoral council meeting. And um, the Lions Club is having breakfast tomorrow morning at, from 8 to 12 in the Township Hall. Know that you are all welcome to that special event. And the Christmas choir is going to start practicing on November 1st after the All Saints Day Mass at 6 o'clock. That's correct. Got so that right? We'll, we'll start at about 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, okay. Yeah. My homily might be longer. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing Peter. <laughs> Have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you all for being with us today, celebrating this Mass. I hope everyone has a great weekend ahead. Uh, it would be nice if the Lord let us have a little sunshine with those beautiful leaves, wouldn't it? But they're still glorious, even in the rain, aren't they? They're just beautiful. I can't believe how beautiful this year everything is. Just think what next week's going to look like, because huh? there's a lot of still green trees out there. So you know, we're going to just have a few more weeks of beauty. So, And then you know what comes, everyone. Yep, it always comes every year, doesn't it? Okay, bless you all. Let's bow our heads praying for God's blessing. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go forth now glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God. And I need thy strength and power 
No. Oh. 